Cindy, it's me, Scar. I have some pictures I really want to show you. Can I come over? Pictures? Pictures of what? From last week, silly. They're really hot. Don't you want to see them? I was stunned that my former best friend wanted to show me pictures of her and my husband having sex last week. I thought that maybe she was feeling guilty and wanted to provide me with proof for a divorce. Of course, she didn't want to just rub it in my face. I was too in a daze to say anything, but... Sure. Come. Eh, will Breck be there? No, he's... isn't there right now. Good. There are some pictures I don't want him to see and things I don't want him to hear. I'll see you in a second. I was still in a fog when I straightened up a little before Scarlet came in. She had asked for wine instead of coffee, even though it was a Saturday morning. The first thing I noticed was her tan. Her outfit exposed a lot of skin, but there were no tan lines anywhere to be seen. Her pictures were on a clipboard. She started with selfies of her and another girl on a tropical beach. Who's that? I asked. That's my girlfriend Krista from college. She's a travel agent now. She's the one who organized the whole trip. I wouldn't have been able to afford it otherwise. Five days in a five-star hotel on a tropical beach and men with bodies like you wouldn't believe. Girl, I got something to tell you. I'm still high, as you can probably tell. So you haven't been there since last week? Was there anyone else you knew there besides Krista? No, why do you ask? Just wondering. Oh, I get it. Cindy, I'm sorry I couldn't invite you too. Krista was only able to take one person and make her company pay for it. I have to write a review about the accommodations, food, entertainment, and so on. What I really want to write about, though, is S-E-X. It was amazing. They had a nudist beach. I swear the smallest one I saw was about six inches and as thick as a Coke can. You'll see. I have some private pictures as well as ones I can show in public. So you've been out of the country for a whole week. I already told you that. What, did something happen while I was gone? Yeah, someone told me that Breck and you had sex last week at the Holiday Inn in Louisville. I kicked Breck out last night. What, Cindy, how could you believe that? I flirt with him, but no more than I do with the other men in our company. Why didn't you wait and check up on me? Gee, you better kiss some ass, girl. There's plenty of women who would grab onto him if he was available. Now that I think about it, I'm insulted that you think I can do that. I'm coming home. She left quickly, bursting into tears. My head was spinning. Shit, shit, shit. I really fucked up. That asshole George set me up. Damn him to hell. I need to call Breck right away and straighten this out. Hello? The voice sounded like it was both angry and depressed. Breck, honey, I just wanted you to know that I've forgiven you and I want you to come home. Forgiven? What the hell did I do that I need your forgiveness? Well, I guess I was a little hasty with what I accused you of, and I thought it would be good if we started fresh. Start with a clean slate? You've got a lot of nerve. First, you accuse me of having an affair without giving me a chance to dispute it. Second, you kick me out of my house. Then, as I feel like calling you vile names, you send out a text message to all of our friends and family saying you have proof that I cheated on you. I actually want to thank you for that. Before today, if I was asked who I thought cared about me the most and would trust and support me no matter what, I would have named my wife, my family, and a bunch of friends. After the messages I received from most of them and after what you told me, I realized that I now have almost no one who really believes in me. I couldn't believe the vile things they wrote to me. It was all based on what you had told them, though some of them said they had suspected me for a long time. No one but my sister and a few friends supported me. Thanks to you, I have nowhere to go this coming Thanksgiving and Christmas because my own parents believed you over me. I don't even know any bars or restaurants where I can show up for fear of embarrassment from former friends. I just sent everyone you lied to about me a loud and clear email message. I am no longer and will never be your friend, son, or in your case, husband. As for even, I do see that possibility. As soon as you receive a divorce petition from my... Divorce? My dear, there is no need for a divorce. Like I said, once you get the divorce papers from my attorney, sign them. It's a simple 50 50ths division of all assets. When the divorce is finalized, we'll both start living equally. We'll each have our own new lives. I was already sobbing. Breck, I made a big mistake. Please let me make it up to you. I love you so much. 
Your words are just words. Your actions prove that your so-called love was paper love. I don't know what kind of proof of my cheating you made up for yourself, but they managed to destroy all your love in record time. You may have loved me, but you had no trust. Some things that are broken can be easily repaired, but trust isn't one of those things. I don't know how I can ever trust you again. And you had no respect. If you had respect for me, you would have come to me and pressed charges. So you had a little love, a lack of trust, and a lack of respect. I don't think that's a very strong foundation for a marriage. Please, from now on, only contact me through my attorney. He hung up the phone. Why, 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 why did I give up so quickly? That creep George got me drunk and convinced me he saw Breck and Scarlet in the motel room and kissed all the way. Considering all of Scarlet's flirting, I easily believed it. That son of a bitch George. Damage control. That's what I need to be thinking about. I quickly sketched a text in opposition to the original one. I admitted I was wrong and was too quick to condemn Breck. I asked everyone to ignore what I had posted. I promised to apologize to Breck. I foolishly hoped that would help. What did help was that everyone was angry at me for ruining their relationship with Breck. I was now on their collective shit lists. I tried calling Breck again. He answered his voicemail. I texted him a message. It was unread. I sent him an email. It too was unread. I continued my attempts until I received messages that the phone number and email address were no longer in service. I found out which motel he was staying at by calling the front desk of nearby motels. After one call to his room, which consisted of his hello and my Breck don't hang up, I was dropped. Subsequent calls went unanswered. Upon arriving at the motel, I found that he had checked out. I called him at work. His secretary and I had a good relationship. As soon as I called, she said, Cindy, what's going on? He came in this morning like he was going to war. He told me he wouldn't take any calls from you. Ashley, I made a big mistake. We had a fight. I made him leave. Now I'm trying to apologize and he won't let me. I just need to talk to him. I can't believe two people who love each other so much can't work things out. Tell you what, I'll work with him to get him to listen to you. I'll get back to you. I finally had hope. I didn't just sit and wait. I couldn't. I was too busy with angry calls and messages from family and friends. The worst were from his mother. I can't believe we thought you were telling the truth when you said you had proof of his cheating. We loved you like a daughter. Now we may have lost our only son. I hope there's a special place in hell for you. I may be risking my salvation by saying this, but this is how I feel. When the end of the day came and there was no call from Ashley, I called her back. She whispered, I tried to talk to him. He bit my head off. He told me that if I mentioned my name one more time, he would fire me. I barely managed to keep him from putting a reprimand in my personnel file. Please don't call here again. A week after my visit with Scarlett, I was sitting at home. There was a knock on the door. I looked out and saw a familiar brown truck and a young man in a brown uniform. He was holding a package and a large notebook. I have a package for Cindy Barnes. I'm Cindy Barnes. I need you to sign, but the rules require that I see documentation that you are who you say you are. I'm sorry, but those are the rules. I pulled out my purse and showed him my driver's license. After signing for the package, I heard the man say, you've been served. He cheerfully walked over to the truck, removed the magnetic UPS tag and laughed. I swear I heard him say, I fool them every time. The situation was getting out of control. I had to do something else. I bought a full page ad in the local paper where I admitted my false accusation and apologized as sincerely as I could. I begged Breck for forgiveness. I sent flowers to his office. I bought billboards begging him to forgive me for admitting my guilt. I wasn't sure what effect my efforts would have. Then I started receiving messages of sympathy and emails from former friends and many strangers. Apparently, I wasn't the only one who had falsely accused my spouse and suffered the consequences. Out of the blue, Breck called, I'm giving to Cindy. Stop the ad campaign. I guess I won't rest until I sit down and talk to you. When can I come over? It took me a moment to gather my wits and answer. How about tomorrow night at six o'clock? Would you like to have dinner? It, why don't I bring our favorite Thai food from the Smiling Elephant? Pad Thai with chicken and shrimp, right? Level three hotness, not the lava level heat you like. Hey, 
If your eyes don't water, your forehead doesn't sweat, and your nose doesn't leak, it's not good pad Thai food. He chuckled. I couldn't believe it. He called out, spoke excitedly. He's coming over. Shit. I should have been prepared. I may have one chance to save our marriage. It was the longest 24 hours of my life. I put on what I hoped was Breck's favorite dress. I made wine for dinner. Finally, he arrived at 6.02, the longest two minutes in history. My body jumped with fright when the doorbell rang. I flew to the door. It was Breck. I was about to chide him for deciding to ring the doorbell, but I wanted to keep things positive. We complimented each other on how we looked. Most importantly, he was smiling. He put the food on the table and I poured the wine. We started eating, trying to eat and talk at the same time. I was surprised that I was so hungry, but we both really liked Thai food. Because of the heat of the food, we drank more wine than usual. More wine than usual helped to lighten the atmosphere. I decided to cut to the chase. Breck, I was wrong, very wrong. I guess I didn't believe that someone as wonderful as you could love someone as flawed as me. I missed you very much while you were away on business. When they told me you were seen in a hotel room with Scarlet, I went crazy. I'm afraid the excessive amount of alcohol didn't help. I remembered how jealous I used to get when I saw Scarlet flirting with you. I forgot how she flirted with everyone, and she was my best friend. She wouldn't betray me. Most importantly, you wouldn't betray me. My greatest wish is that you give me a chance to atone for my sin. Do we have a chance? Cindy, I don't want to think about the pressure I was under in the first weeks after you accused me of cheating. It took quite a while to calm down. Your attempt to get me to forgive you and believe you were sorry really took effect. If you can prove to me that I can trust you, that damn doorbell rang. What a bad time. It rang and rang. I'll get rid of whoever it is. Don't move. I ran to the door. As I started to open the door, George burst in. Did he hurt you? Let me talk to the bastard. I yelled, what the hell are you doing here, George? Get out. My husband and I are having an important conversation. Get out now. I thought you had broken up with that cheater. What lies did he use to get back into your heart? I'm the one you want. You told me so yourself. George, everything I said or did, I said when I was drunk. I'm begging you to leave before I call the police. Look, I know I lied about his affair with Scarlett, but he has other girls, I'm sure of it. What we had between us that night was special. We can build a new life on it. Breck spoke up. You're the one who told Cindy I was having an affair? You're the bastard. What is this special night you're talking about? I shouted, don't say that, George, please. George didn't follow instructions. He grinned and said, our special night involved sex and intense lovemaking. She didn't have to be talked into giving herself to me for long. She wanted it, loser. Breck took a couple steps toward George. George took a step toward Breck. George swung first. His fist seemed to bounce off Breck's chin. Breck's fist broke George's nose and knocked him to the floor. Since George looked the most hurt, I rushed over to him. This sent Breck into an even greater rage. I stood up to say something to Breck, and he hit me. I went down. I never, ever expected my husband to hit me. It was completely out of character for me. I didn't cry. I helped George to his feet. I stood in front of him and kicked him in the balls as hard as I could. Then I went to get a towel and ice for his nose. I didn't notice Breck calling the police and asking for an ambulance. Before the police arrived, neither of us said anything. Breck told them the whole truth about what had happened. I wanted to deny that Breck had hit me, but there was a red mark on me that indicated the truth. George said he wanted to press charges against both of us. Breck and I willingly went in the police car. George went to the emergency room in the ambulance. We were charged, bailed, and sent home. We took different cabs even though we were going to the same place. Upon arriving at our house, Breck drove off in his car. I went back to the beginning, trying to atone for another sin. I just couldn't give up without one more try. A good idea occurred to me. One day, I showed up at Breck's workplace where there were about 50 friends and family members who were also hoping to redeem themselves. Some had signs apologizing or asking for forgiveness. I hoped the number of people would make a difference. Yes, can I help you? Ashley's greeting was curt but professional. 
Yes, we'd like to see Breck Barnes, please. To my horror, she replied, I'm sorry, he doesn't work here anymore. Maybe someone else can help you? Afraid to recover from the shock, I replied, you can direct us to someone who knows where he is. I'm not at liberty to divulge such information. I'll call Mr. Elliot. Mr. Elliot came out to meet us. He was not pleased to see us. So this is the traitor's brigade? You bastards and bitches cost me one of my best employees. He left to get away from you. He needed to start a new life in a new place. If you want us to help you find him, eat shit. Now get out of here before I call security. We're gone. I turned to Ashley one last time. She shrugged. I don't know. I called all the offices listed in Breck's company's annual report. They all reported that no one named Breck Barnes works there. He had either moved on to a competitor or was contracted rather than hired, or had changed careers. He took half of our property and left me the house as stated in the divorce papers. I signed the papers and a few months later our divorce was final. I considered using some of my money to hire a private investigator to find him. I waited, hoping I could come up with something that would make him forgive me and believe he could trust me. I never came up with anything other than, I promise not to do more of the things I promised never to do before. Not very convincing. Nah, it was hard to let myself stay in the house Breck and I shared, but I couldn't bring myself to leave. I wanted him to be able to find me just in case. The wait wasn't long. I got a letter from Scarlett. It said, I'm sorry I haven't contacted you since we had that fight at your house a few months ago. I was really angry that you didn't trust me, your best friend, to think that I might have cheated with your husband. Anyway, one day I got a letter from Breck after he moved out. He was apologizing for one of your friends dragging me into an affair to hurt him. He said it wasn't fair to me. That was so sweet. My heart just melted. We started texting each other. He opened his heart to me. Finally, he invited me to his place to visit. As soon as we saw each other, we both knew we were meant to be together. Now I'm Mrs. Scarlett Barnes, and I couldn't be happier. I can't believe you didn't trust him. Well, please thank this George for including me in his plan to seduce you. I'd say, no hard feelings, but that would be a lie. I'll send a picture of the baby when it's born in six months. I was ready to move out of the house.